All right, we're ready to start talking about business feasibility. Now, obviously, we've talked, we've done some business feasibility already. We've been talking about it. Now it's probably time to do it a little bit deeper and to start thinking about how we're going to write it up. Sometimes business feasibility is the first thing that you do, but it's not always necessarily the first thing that you write. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. There is no rule on that. Okay, but. Again, as you're starting to figure out all of these other sections, you can move these around on the page, right? So we want to look at, in your business plan, start describing, okay? You, you've made your case for the business, you've talked about your customers, uh, you've talked about the competition. Well, how is it now that you can justify what you've written? Well, you know, we're going to describe the techniques that we use to determine feasibility, and again, one of the best ways to do this is to go out and sell some. Again, with Anna's, we went out to flea markets, we went on eBay and we sold a hundred different pieces of jewelry. We got an idea of what people liked and what, we, what they didn't like, which was really important, so we don't end up buying those anymore. Um, other things that we've used, we've gone to zoomerang.com, which is a free service, uh, and you can do surveys of customers. They're pretty easy to set up. You can send those out to various emails that you have, various potential customers. Uh, you can do polling of a variety of different kinds. Uh, most of us have walked through a mall at some time in a city and had somebody approach us with a clipboard. A lot of times they're asking about store placement or product placement in that mall and they're, they're identifying, they're doing a feasibility study by asking your opinion. Sometimes people call at night. Um, we'll do that a lot when we're on the road and we meet somebody during the day who has a business idea. We'll go back to our hotel room at night, write up a, a three minute survey, two or three questions about the business and call you know, maybe 20 numbers and talk to, we end up talking to about 10 people and we ask them the question and, and basically we say, hi, uh, I'm here working on a business idea. Uh, I'd like to bounce a couple ideas off of you. I'm not selling anything. I promise this won't take more than three minutes. Uh, generally, the people who do want to talk to you, about 50% uh, is, is my is sort of my running statistic, um, about 50% will spend 10 minutes on the phone with you and they'll engage you in a conversation. And, and a, a lot of times what happens is you find out really interesting things about the community that you didn't know. You'll find other locations that you didn't know about. Um, you'll find some real warnings out there about, well, did you know that there's already somebody doing that or somebody's tried that four or five times? Doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't try it again. Maybe they did it wrong. Maybe they weren't selling the right thing at the right time. But uh, again, it gives you some, some, some more turf to investigate, I guess. Um, and you can always do market analysis. There's lots of stuff on the internet and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. A lot of times it's superfluous information that you get. If, if somebody's going to start a, uh, let's say, a, uh, a hotel for dogs, uh, boy, that's a, that might be a great idea. Um, typically when we get an idea like that presented to us, there will be a statistic in, incorporated in the feasibility study that says something like there are 8 billion dogs in the world. Well, that's really an interesting fact, but it doesn't mean anything to the business. It doesn't mean that there are 8 billion dog owners who are ready to buy your service. Let's kick it down to the buyer level. Let's get right down into the neighborhood where you're going to do it and try to figure out, are people really interested in this idea? Okay. Um, and again, we're not spending hours and hours and hours on this. Sometimes a weekend of canvassing a neighborhood, putting flyers in the box and asking people to call you. Uh, we did that with a landscaping business not too long ago where we put out 2,000 flyers on a Saturday and by Monday morning we were receiving phone calls about people who wanted the landscaping service. Um, so a couple days worth of work and we had enough customers signed up that we knew that we could do the business. Uh, that's a paragraph in the business plan that basically says here's where we went, here's what we asked people, we attached a copy of the survey and we said you know in in one Saturday we got 15 customers all paying an average of $15 a week to get their lawn mowed. That's pretty simple and we can run that out we can we can talk about how many more customers we can add and and how many more customers we can reasonably do in a summer uh, and that generates our income statement. 
okay, our income projection for the year. And, and that tells us a whole lot about whether the business is doable, whether or not it should be funded, um, and how much money the person's going to make by doing it. Uh, pretty simple strategies sometimes. Other times we have used web-based information. It's never a bad thing to go do uh, some, to look at some other businesses on the web or to get some statistics. Uh, at one point we were looking at an egg producer, uh, somebody who wanted to raise chickens, and we found out this whole other niche that we didn't know about, which were organic brown eggs, and that led to a whole different business than what we'd originally started uh, uh, with. So again, that market analysis is really kind of important. We understood what we should feed the chickens, where we should buy the chickens, how long the chickens would live, how many eggs they could produce in a week. All of those things were very, very important for us that, you know, uh, those of us especially who don't, don't work with chickens every day. Uh, what materials, resources, and support are going to be needed to further test the idea? That may be something that we want preliminary funding for. Uh, that may be something that we negotiate with the community rehab program to go buy $200 worth of software so that we can test out whether or not this person should run a business uh, tutoring children on Reading Rabbit and Math Rabbit. Uh, th those are kinds of Im important little pieces that we might need to invest with, uh, invest in up front. Um, and then we want to craft a clear statement on potential success. Um, not pie in the sky or we're going to be Donald Trump uh, millionaires, although that might happen. Um, but we want to say, you know, based on our, our best information to date, and, and this is a guess, and I realize that many of us get tenuous about uh, committing to, to the future sometimes, um, we can say that, that reasonably we think that Anna will sell X number of earrings, bracelets, and necklaces in the average month. And again, that's based on sales so far. It's, it's, you know, you can't predict the future, but you can try, right? Um, and again, describe the, tech, the techniques that you use to determine feasibility. Again, you're telling this story, and you're writing it not only so that, that you're saying, boy, you know, we tested this, and it really seems to work, or we need to tweak it over here, but, but we're also we're, we're trying to sell this business idea to a funder, right? Um, so again, uh, maybe we sold samples, maybe we did X number of surveys, uh, maybe we called X number of people, uh, we did this kind of market analysis, uh, you know, uh, we went to the local small business development center and we asked them what they thought. Those opinions sometimes are really important. What do you think if we were to open a car wash here? Do you think there's a need for a car wash? Well, if the person at the small business development center says, well, you know what? Yeah, this is a growing community and we don't have a car wash. We have 3,000 people driving cars here. That might be a really great market to have. And, you know, again, those local resources like the Small Business Development Center, a lot of times they know what's been tried and what's succeeded and what's failed. They come with a lot of information and a lot of history about small businesses. They do it every day. So bouncing ideas off of people and having someone who is respected in the field of small business development say, yes, this is a good idea. We've thought for a long time that somebody should start a car wash here. That's really impressive. Now, you need some data to go along with that. It can't just be somebody's hunch, but that's really important. So spend a couple days testing that business, figure that out. It may take you a couple weeks to do this, but at this point, we would hope that, that you know, you've already tested some business ideas. Give, give it a try at, at writing down how was it that you did it, what were the results, why, it is, why is it that you think we should move forward on funding this business, and then we'll do the next section.